Now, once we're done, the pressure valve is going to be left in place. But what we're going to do is attach an, a release valve over here to let the pressure off. And basically have just an inlet valve and a gauge over here. The pressure part here is not really needed. My air compressor is going to have one built in it. So there's not much of a need to double up. And we want to make this a little bit simpler. So we'll wind up with just probably another T unit on here. I don't have one of those. So I may have to pick one of those up. But I should be able to reuse the pressure gauge. Okay, we have it rednecked up a little bit here. To shut off the uh, valve, I just put a hose connector here that shuts off, one here that shuts off, and an inlet here, and we've got our air compressor ready to connect. The air compressor has been dropped down to about 55 pounds. This is good for 30 to 60. So in theory, we shouldn't blow anything up. If it does, it was an accident. And we've got the video proof in case the insurance company needs it. So we should put this on. We should get up to 60 pounds, about 55, and nothing should blow up. And then we'll kind of see if we hear any leaks. So long story short, the pop-off valve, which is designed to keep you from overpressurizing your tank, is popping at 50 pounds. It is set for a 60 pound tank. Initially the documents say up to 60 pounds. I'm assuming this is likely a case where for safety this is probably actually set at 50. It was so close to 50 it makes sense that that actually is what this is set to. So when it says, if I can verify that, we'll find out. Maybe this says it's a 60 pound tank. but as long as you've got this pop-off valve, you're never going to get 60 out of it. Okay, so right now the pressure valve on the compressor says that it is about 35, about 38 pounds here. Unfortunately, I can't just remove this because I don't have any valves on it right now. But overall, it's holding pressure well enough that I'm not going to try to return it. So maybe tomorrow We'll go out and get some valves for it and take it from there. Okay, one thing about <clears throat> this setup is that there are probably a hundred different ways of doing it. All of them are wrong. Uh, no, honestly, it's, it's, it's pneumatic connections. As long as you've got your connections and you get air into a tank, it holds pressure. It doesn't really matter. So, basically, this is how this is what you get in the box. What I have done is picked up a few additional pieces from Lowe's to add to it to basically convert it into my pressure tank. I'm going to show a picture of that here. These are the five parts that I picked up. I am going to reuse the gauge that comes with it. I am actually not 100% certain how good the air measurements are. There seems to be about a three to five pound difference between what this is showing and my air compressor. Now the air compressor is an old Porter cable. It could be wrong also. So let's set everything up. Okay, the first thing we did was just use an adjustable wrench to remove the connector that was designed to connect just to an air hose. So we're going to remove this and we're going to put in some additional items to make it easier. So um, pretty tight. These connections actually have some type of glue in the threads, like a JB Weld type thing, or not JB Weld, but uh, uh, Loctite. Not exactly sure what it was. Looks like it may have even been just some kind of a, maybe even CA glue type of an adhesive was on the thread. So these were very tight to get out and we even cleaned them up with a tap set to help clean up the threads. This one actually came off in two pieces so the top piece came off and then I wound up having to use a socket to get the other piece off. It did not come off in one piece like I had originally hoped. 
This one again, very tight, so we had to get in, use the wrench for a little leverage to uh, get in there. Well, I love this wrench with the adjustable handle that can bend at different angles. Very often it winds up dropping and you don't want it to, and it kind of becomes a pain, but it's still a handy little wrench to have around. Okay, now those two pieces are out. And here we are with the tap set. And in case you're wondering what size this hole was, this one was not metric. This was actually a standard size. And you can see the size of this tap posted below. As always, yours may differ in size. This is what mine was when I checked it out. There's always a chance that they may have different versions of this thing from different places. Um, but as of the making of this video, the size that I had to use is shown below. The glue that was left over was very hard, so here it is. It's kind of cleaning up some of the glue off of that connection to make it look, just making it look a little bit pretty. As you can see, this thing is scratched and scarred from just the, the, the hooks that hold the lid on. So, not really gaining much here, but figure why not. So this was too big to fit directly to the adapter fittings that I actually had. So in order to put the T adapter into here, we had to put in a thread reducer. So here we are. And I'll include a description to this below. This dropped it, I believe it was 3 8 down to 1 quarter. As usual, it's just standard connections, pipe thread tape to keep it from leaking, and just tighten it around the wrench. Now we're adding in the T connection, and this is just a standard uh, one male to two female T adapter, I believe. And I'll include a link to this in the, in the um, section below as well. I believe this was quarter inch, all three connections. Again, pipe thread tape just to keep it from leaking. Now we're adding in the valve just so you know later on i did have problems with this leaking because it has built in thread tape or thread sealant but that by itself was not enough and i did have to change that later on so i would definitely recommend going ahead and using pipe thread tape as you can see using a socket is the easy way to put this one on and i will show the size socket below This valve swings both ways. We will also going to use the socket to get the end piece out of this adapter. Again, very tight. The sealant they used made it very hard to break the threads loose. And there you can see that wrench, how it can move on you. And yes, I said wrench, I meant socket handle. Cleaning up, like I said, that, that glue that they use, that sealant to lock the threads, it's just very, leaves a lot of debris when you're cleaning up, you're just blowing it out with the blower. And now we are installing the second valve again. Use pipe thread tape on these. Don't rely on just the built-in sealant. And again, 
again using the socket, put it back on. This is going to give us both basically two valves. Here we are adding the adapter to attach the air compressor coupling. Again, pipe the red tape. Now I was just sort of looking at making sure that that was the right size. So I'm going to try to take the pressure gauge off of this so that we can reuse it. I'm trying to avoid actually spending money on gauge when the one that came with this should work perfectly fine. It was being a bear. Uh, the wrench wouldn't really fit onto the threads. So I finally reached a point of, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it. We carried it over to the vise. Uh, placed everything into the vise and basically decided to do it that way to get everything turned off since I was having trouble getting the wrench on. The adjustable wasn't fitting. If I found out what size wrench actually fit that, then a regular box-in wrench probably would have worked perfectly fine without issues. But I didn't feel like digging through. The, the basement's a mess right now. Didn't feel like digging through to find the right size wrench. So just decided to cheat, head over to the vise, stick it in the vise, and get it off that way. So in a second, we will finish that up. Okay, so we got that off, and as you can see in the pictures, things didn't really go that well. Long story short, it twisted the mechanicals, twisted the dial, cracked the glass. So yeah, if you're going to try to put that in a vise, don't do it. So what do we do? Slow trip. Picked up a new cobalt one, basically the exact same gauge. It was like 12 bucks. We'll include a link below. Pipe the red tape. And screwing that into the outlet side. So now you can see the basic layout. On one side we have the coupler to connect your air hose from your air compressor, a valve to shut that on and off, and your pressure escape valve. On the other one we have a secondary valve and the actual gauge to tell how much pressure you have in the tank. This way you can connect your coupling, leave it connected, and turn the pressure on and off to put pressure in the tank. So now that everything's together, let's hook it up and see how we do it. So we turned the air on, found a leak, well, checking for leaks, I should say. And I did find leaks around that valve right there, and we did go back and basically take those out, put pipe thread tape on them, and put them back in. Okay, so there you have it. That is basically what we did. As you can see in this setup right here, the air valve connects to the coupler on the, in on the incoming side. You can shut that valve on and off. It also has the pressure blow-off valve. 
On the other side, you can see how much pressure you've got in your tank and you have an additional valve to shut everything off. You can leave the compressor connected while letting the air out to bring it down and then just close it off to bring it back up. Uh, pretty straightforward setup and that is what I did to convert my tank into a pressure tank.